Hello and welcome back to Polytubes. Today we're going to be looking at uh, smart materials inside 3D Coat and we're going to be using them to texture this uh, like treasure chest thing that I've made. This um, this was a sculpt entirely within 3D Coat and this is just the low poly baked version. Uh, so I already have a normal map from that because this used to exist as a high poly model. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to be texturing it and one of the first things that you probably want to do is actually just uh, get your occlusion and your cur curvature baked. Some of the s smart materials require this. I, th I think all of them will require an ambient occlusion and most of them or s some of them will require a c curvature. Um, when you try to apply some stuff it will do the, um, the curvature c calculation itself. Um, so what, if you just sort of s select one of these materials that requires it, it will automatically put one on. For ambient occlusion, uh, I believe it will ask you to do that. But um, yeah, so there we go. This smart material requires an ambient occlusion layer. So you, you can either do it this way just by selecting, uh, you know, like some material that you want to use. Or uh, if I just cancel this, close that. Uh, up, up in the, uh, the textures window, you do have... The options to calculate your occlusion or your curvature. Uh, so I'll just do this now. But um, one pretty cool thing uh, about this sort of occlusion bake is if you change the normal map or if you add something to your normal map, you can rebake your ambient occlusion and it will take this sort of new depth information into account. So uh, let's see if I can find a good example. Something kind of very obvious, like an obvious kind of normal pattern. And uh, make sure you're on like a blank layer or some other layer. Seems a bit too small. Let's try and make this a bit bigger just for the uh, sake of an example. So I'll do this and I'll disable these other two for now. This is my color and my spec. So we're only going to have the normal map. Uh, be applied to this and I'll just use the uh, p paint bucket tool here. I'll just fill the entire layer basically with this selection. Not sure if this will take a while or not. We'll see. Oh no, that was quick. Uh, okay, so now, close that, we've just put on some new normals uh, but our ambient occlusion kind of still, uh, if I go and press the 2 key, so now we're looking at a flat shaded ambient occlusion. Uh, ambient inclusion is still the old one, but if we get rid of this, and I don't know if you need to enable this layer or not, I think it might just take it without it, but either way we'll enable it, and we'll calculate the occlusion again. So now the ambient occlusion has sort of taken these normals into account. I just wanted to show you that real quick because uh, we are going to be doing it later, and it might be something that I might accidentally skip over, so I'll make sure I cover my bases now. Um, but either way, we're going to undo that and get rid of that. Put things back to the way they were. Okay, done. And I'll re-enable these. Uh, it's quite important for uh, smart materials, although it depends entirely on if you want to be using all three channels of these smart materials. So if you're not familiar with these, um, essentially they're kind of like uh, presets in a way, like things that to sort of save you time having to sort of redo the same thing over and over again. Like if you had a particular plastic, for example, rather than always having to remember the uh, the spec values, uh, whether or not you're using some sort of specific normals or the color or anything, um, you can kind of just combine it all into a material and then you can reuse that material as much as you like on whatever assets you like. So it's pretty, it's pretty handy. Um, and as I was saying before, you have these three channels here, which you use to sort of, you know, these are just like your standard uh, p painting ch channels. So you have your normal, your color, um, and then your s spec and gloss. Uh, and so these work in conjunction with the smart materials and that I can disable color and the color will now go away. So if I were to fill this layer or start to paint on this layer, it won't include the color that's embedded within this material. Same with the spec. And I guess this one probably doesn't have a normal map on it, but that would also disappear. Um, and so with this in mind, um, for some things, uh, it's often 
a lot sort of quicker to actually just uh, refurbish or tweak a lot of the materials that they have here because they do have a fair few but we will have a look at just sort of what it means to kind of create your own and there's a little bit of confusion here and I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's sort of a UI issue or if it's just me kind of being a bit weird but um, I'll show you what I mean if you're already familiar with smart materials and how they work and you just want to see me texture this thing then skip ahead to the next video because in this one we're just going to be looking at material editor itself and in the next video we'll put all that into practice when you open up a new one you get this sort of window here and this stuff is essentially these are just layers so obviously I'll just call this one the base layer and then you can add layers on top of that um, you can also if you click on this arrow here you can move them up and down uh, you know similar to sort of moving layers around here uh, I'll get rid of that layer for now though and let's just disable some stuff so we'll run through this kind of like what each thing does uh, so at the moment the only thing we have enabled is color and this is pretty sort of self-explanatory really um, this is where you define the color of the material uh, but it has two modes one is to replace and the other is to modulate and modulate will essentially it will sort of take whatever color you have as your foreground color um, I say sort of because it's kind of like a multiply I think so at the moment I've set to modulate my color is this orange thing we're seeing an orange in there but that's because the color that we're modulating it with is white so we get the same result you can actually sort of use this as a tint if, if you wanted um, but I don't know why you would ever want to do that I personally haven't found a, uh, a need or a use to ever change the color if you're using modulate so essentially if you want to use whatever color you have uh, keep this as white and keep it as modulate otherwise if you want a specific color then you can tell it to ignore whatever color you're using and to always use uh, the color of the material so there we go that's color and also it's not just uh, the color you know I, sh I should mention this is essentially your sort of albedo or a diffused texture area so if you were to click on the field you don't just have to have a color you can have you know an actual texture you can modulate that texture with the color um, same rules apply but yeah just worth noting you can also use a texture depth uh, same thing this is just your normal map uh, very self-explanatory really um, but we will just to show what it does if you uh, sorry probably did that a bit fast if you hover over these fields and there's this little sort of arrow here you can actually add in some procedural noise and you can change uh, various things like the scale and the contrast of it and the sharpness as well and this will sort of uh, play a big role I imagine in sort of a fair few materials that you make um, noise is always handy to kind of create sort of randomness and things and so if I uh, if actually if I disable color for now let's bump this up to like 200 percent or something so hopefully you can see that our noise map is uh, is acting as our normals map so you know that you can kind of if, if you wanted uh, wipe that you can stick in any sort of um, black and white texture into here um, I would say to make sure that it tiles unless you're doing something very specific and you know what it is you're doing I would say to pretty much always use tiled textures with this sort of thing um, so anyway that's that's the depth uh, so now we'll move on to the gloss which I'm going to just cover very quickly it's just essentially gloss you can sort of you know uh, specify how shiny something is uh, and at the same time you could use um, the noise mask or a texture to kind of define what's shiny what isn't um, and then again this is the exact same with metalness you define what's metal with white what isn't metal with black um, very very sort of self-explanatory the things that kind of start to get a bit uh, confusing is we have these condition contrast and opacity channels uh, so I'll show you the condition first uh, just because it's in the list 
this is where you can kind of control where this color is being applied. It's sort of, it's, you're saying, yeah, I want to use this color, this lovely sort of pinky purple. Um, but the condition is saying, I, I, I want to use it in a certain amount of places. And by default, uh, it's set to always. So you, you're basically saying, please cover this model in whatever. So we'll just say more on concave. Um, so now it's kind of ignoring, um, the convex areas of the mesh and it's only sort of applying it on the concave and then similarly you can have it the opposite so now as you can see it's sort of only appearing on the edges and you can control the uh, the strength of this which is pretty cool and then this is where you might want to use let's say a noise uh, let's see and you can see as i'm sort of tweaking this here it's changing it a bit down here so let's just say done and then come and have a closer look. It's sort of creating a bit of uh, variation in the stroke. Whereas if I get rid of that, it goes sort of back to relatively straight. Obviously, it depends entirely on your mesh. Um, this particular mesh, uh, it's not entirely flat here. Like it's not a completely sharp 90 degree angle. It kind of slopes up a bit here. Um, if this was a box, uh, you'd be seeing like very sort of straight edge outlines. Uh, so that's the condition um, and I mean th there are lots more things here you can have sort of more where there would be light so this is going to be most of it except for probably underneath although apparently still underneath maybe that's uh, a bit bugged but uh, more in shadow maybe that will uh, still kind of seems to be the same I'm not sure why it would do that but uh the ones that do definitely work, sort of more on top and more on bottom. These are pretty cool ones. Um, might not have the right mesh for it. Or oh, my degree is actually way too high. So if I bring this down. Oh, okay, so I had this set to just way too high. So now we're getting sort of stronger colors on the top. And as it begins to go down, it will kind of fade out a bit. Uh, and then it's the same for the opposite. The, uh, the more on the bottom, more on sides. Um, you know, I have... A, have a play with these things they're all pretty cool pretty handy uh, let's set this back to our edges and so now let's take a look at the other one and this is this is where it gets a bit sort of confusing um, it's called contrast but the the field that you get is just it's called edge scattering and let's just put this up so it's a bit sort of stronger uh, let's find a nice place to zoom in on Let's make it a very more obvious color, just so you can see sort of what these things are actually doing. So the edge scattering, um, I believe if you were to just sort of adjust it as is, mm, nothing's going to change. Um, I think this one kind of needs a texture. Uh, so as an example, we'll again just throw in a noise, but uh, again you can kind of throw in whatever it is you want. Um, this is also worth noting, uh, if you do put in a texture and it's like a t tiled t texture you can still click on this little arrow here to adjust the uh, the scale of that texture so you don't have to you know have it perfectly scaled from wherever you're obtaining it from you can you can adjust the scale here but again this is why you should be using something that tiles because you don't want to be sort of shrinking or expanding something that isn't tiled so yeah let me just uh throw this on and you can hopefully see it's sort of changing things a bit here it's uh, it's altering my my edge essentially and you can kind of control how much it will kind of s scatter it so if you can imagine um, sort of where the the line ends it will kind of continue it a bit depending on your input and my input at the moment is just a sort of a noise map so we're getting this sort of random bits of you know stuff sort of scattering from the edge that's you know I guess that's why they call it edge scattering but the reason that it's kind of confusing is uh, because they call it contrast but if we were to enable now the opacity oh and the windows just moved this last field here is the opacity uh, channel uh, but it has a contrast slider so you know it's a bit it's a bit weird, but the easiest way to think about this is essentially what it says within the field. It's an opacity mask. So 
again we have our sort of edge line here and if we if we didn't want this line to be sort of completely uniform across the model so I'll just add in a noise map to sort of show you what that will do uh, something like this so yeah it's kind of dulled the effect and in some places it's even sort of completely discarded it and if I were to bring down the actual amount of my uh, c condition which I haven't set a t texture for it, so it's just trying to be like a straight line across uh, the c convex areas. But we're using the opacity mask to just say, you know, don't do that. So that's what it looks like. Uh, so then if I get rid of our opacity mask, then it all comes back. And so that's that's pretty much it. That's basically all you need to know about smart materials. Um, you would just kind of keep. Uh, complicating this um, by adding different layers to have different effects and then later on you could sort of change each layer for whatever it is you want to do um, but yeah for the most part that's kind of that's it it's v very simple but the results are, are often very very nice um, yeah so that is the end of this video and the next one we're just going to sort of take everything that we've just done and apply it sort of into practice and it's going to be a sort of uh, a quick job to kind of show you the power of s smart materials like if you wanted to go down the route of kind of making everything on your own then you know that's that, that's that's amazing but we're just kind of we're going to be using sort of what is readily available to, to texture this tr treasure chest and uh, yeah um, if that's something that interests you then I will see you in the next one